teach them. Always make sure the message I reach them. Since 2004, we have been taking care of high-risk prisoners. Initially, those prisoners were prisoners who were involved in some high-end um, narcotics cases. When we won't be this afternoon addressing specific incidents that are the subject of ongoing investigations as that would be inappropriate. But what we would like to do is just give you a sense of the things that happened down at heart and the interactions between our service members and the inmates that are there. What you've seen here today are just some of the many difficulties that my staff will have in dealing with some of the most non-conformist, violent individuals that this country has produced. What we are doing here is simply getting the assistance of members of the Jamaican Defense Force in helping to secure some of the more troublesome individuals. I am authorized under the provisions of the Correctional Services Act, or the Corrections Act, to designate members of the Jamaican Defense Force as authorized persons. And once they're so designated, they enjoy the full powers and privileges as a correctional officer. The benefit of the, ch the differences really in the terms of service under which members of the military operate under the Defense Act, as opposed to correctional officers operating under the Corrections Act. We try to make the best use of each arm so that we can achieve security and safety for the various inmates that we hold. I hope that the, the footage that you saw today gives you an idea of some of the challenges that the staff, whether it be correctional services staff or military, what they face on a daily basis. And one would be, it would have been easily seen that there is no evidence, especially on these tapes, of abuse of inmates. In fact, those that you saw here, there was obvious restraint on the part of the correctional services staff and the military in addressing some of the most disruptive behavior that, that you saw. For many years, and we have just managed to get some relief from it because of the special security measures which have been in place authorized to deal with these individuals. As General Anderson indicated before, one of the... One of the things that these persons will do is to try and drive a wedge between the forces of law and security. And they will also try to drive a wedge between us and the civilian population that we seek to protect on a daily basis. It is important that we understand uh, these individuals are unrepentant, many of them. They do not accept responsibility for the grief that they have caused many families in Jamaica. I am relieved by the fact that the prison authorities and the chief of staff and his men have installed surveillance cameras that can give us an opportunity to view some of the interactions between these individuals and the security persons. <laughs> As you can see, the security officers exercise considerable restraint under the most testing of circumstances. We expect no less than this from them. But we must understand that there are certain individuals who, whenever they are in free society, they do serious harm to the security and the well-being of communities. 
And once they are incarcerated, they wish to continue to perpetrate um, on the rest of the society. It is in our interest to ensure that they are denied the freedom to do so. What precipitated the preceding video is the inmates' deliberate and coordinated attempts to defy the authorities by throwing food, feces, water, and other garbage onto the walkway. The principle under which we operate is that I don't want them to see staff members cleaning these areas because it will be a small victory for them that they mess the place up and then have our staff dealing with the most reprehensible items in the corridor. In the cases that you're seeing, um, to, to us it seems quite clear that uh, some sort of overreaction is trying to be provoked. The soldiers are aware of this and they've been briefed and that's why they have taken a certain approach to things. It was for this reason why we put cameras up there because we knew that we would get to this point. The only restraints that we are authorized to use under the Corrections Act are handcuffs and straight jackets. That's it. So we're not even allowed to use um, leg restraints. Soldiers that are on that post are armed with their bare muscles and batons. Yes. We do not allow firearms onto the security posts. So it is all batons and just using the, using the, the brawn that they have. At this point, the department is not, is not contemplating a change to the legislation. What we are trying to do is to acquire some more non-lethal um, weaponry, things that would not would enable us to subdue an inmate without causing injury. Um, at this point, we have some budgetary constraints under which we have to operate and we are trying a, a, an assortment of means to try and get these non-lethal weapons in our arsenal. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.